Hello everyone, Flying Ditchy here and welcome back to our Hearts of Iron 4 tutorial for complete beginners. This is the fourth part. Last episode we talked about uh, how armies work, how their stats work, uh, how you have to assign front lines, offensive lines. Uh, there are some more things but we will show that off later in the game. Uh, and in this episode we are going to talk about the navy. Now to access the navy you can click on uh, this strategic navy map mode. And then the map changes to... Uh, uh, to all your boats over here and you can see the sea tiles now a bit better and you can see our trade routes the blue lines and the white lines for supplies now supplies we will talk about at the very end that is this button but i'm not going to click this because you will get uh, very confused let's do everything uh, step by step over here and yeah these are all our boats that we currently have built what I always like to do at the start of the game is to um, uh, combine all my boats and then take a look at it uh, from that point. So what I do is shift and then click on... Oh wait, it's not going to work. Oh, it is. You have to click one and then use uh, uh, normally and then sh uh, press shift and then click the other ones. And just click on a port. I will put them in Holstein here in Kiel. And now all my boats are going over here. And I will unpause the video, the game. I always say video, I don't know why. And now all the boats are going over there. You can see my destroyers going over here as well. And now all the boats are over here. Then press G on your keyboard to merge everything. You can also click this button. And now we have one uh, single fleet with all our boats. There are a lot of different ship types uh, in the game. But the uh, most important thing that you need to remind yourself of is that you have submarines that you have screen ships these are the destroyers and the light cruisers and i think also the heavy cruisers in our um, yeah and heavy cruisers as well i think heavy cruisers can be, be both uh, but i can see that this is a screen ship because this one is not having this symbol over here that that star these four ships have this star and that means that these ships are heavy ships and uh, they have a different role in naval combat. Now, what I always do first is right click on my submarines. And select all submarines. And this put my submarines in a different fleet. These 15 boats are my submarines. Submarines are for convoy raiding uh, on the enemy. And that is their only purpose really. Uh, you can use them differently, especially when you have the DLCs, but I think in the base game, submarines are only for convoy raiding of the enemy. So for example, if we are going to war with Great Britain and they have trade routes with America, we could put our submarines in these, uh, these sea tiles over here and they are going to raid the convoys and uh, stop their getting their resources and stuff. That is what the purpose is of the submarine. So what I always do is uh, select the submarine icon, give them a different color that is a bit more uh, recognizable. And then I put this one on top here. And that creates a different uh, fleet. So this uh, is now my submarine fleet. I will also change this symbol, by the way, to the submarine and blue. And this is my Kriegsmarine, the rest of the ships. And for the Kriegsmarine, I use uh, this symbol with the heavy battery. And I guess I'm going to make them red. There we go. So we already have two different fleets now. The submarines and the uh, battle fleet. This is my battle fleet, really. Um, and now the next thing that you need to know is that uh, for every capital ship... Let's click on my battleship here, the Deutschland class. For every capital ship that is having this symbol here you need four screen ships um, you can have 3.8 with dip, with modifiers but just just go with four and that is important because otherwise your heavy ships your i mean i should say capital ships not heavy ships they are heavy but the capital ships with this star and one icon over here uh, at least the star uh, can otherwise be hit by the enemy torpedoes and if you have a full screen uh, ability, then they cannot hurt your ships with torpedoes. Uh, so if I, we have four heavy ships right now, that means that we need 16 screen ships. Let's see how much we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have two extra right now. 
So if we would go to to uh, to battle a uh, fleet, we cannot beat the English fleet right now. But for example, the Soviet fleet or uh, the Polish fleet or the Swedish fleet, we will have our heavy ships, our our capital ships, completely uh, defended against the enemy torpedoes. And that is what you need to uh, remind yourself of. Uh, let's click on our uh, capital ship here. This is, I guess, one of our biggest ships at the moment. Yeah, we have the battleship one, the Deutschland class. I think we are also making new heavy ships. We are making the Scharnhorst class. Uh, they're not getting built right now, but uh, when these submarines are finished, we are going to make two more uh, uh, capital ships. You can see that it's having a, a uh, two symbol here, another one. That is just um, uh, the battleship. Um, year. Uh, the further this number, the better they are actually. So these ones are better than the uh, capital ships, the Deutschland's class that we have right now. Now I will show how the, how the battles work when we are actually going to war. Uh, but the 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 sole purpose of this uh, this capital ship, the the biggest ships in our uh, navy, is to use their heavy attack and piercing on the enemy. Heavy ships, the capital ships, I should say. Um, you see that they have a little bit of light attack and light piercing as well. Light, light attack goes to the enemy screen vessels, so the destroyers and the light cruisers, and sometimes the heavy cruisers. Um, um, and they will do damage to both. Um, and that is really the purpose of these ships, do damage to the enemy heavy ships, capital ships. Uh, let's take a look at other ships in our main fleet here. Uh, we also have some heavy cruisers. Now heavy cruisers um, also do a lot of damage to uh, the enemy heavy ships. Capital ships. And they have piercing. They also have a little bit of light attack. Um, and that is the only thing they can do as well. Uh, let's see, light cruiser. Did I take a look at the light cruiser here? I think light cruisers are good for uh, detection. Let's compare the light cruiser with the heavy cruiser here. You can do this with shift clicking. Put something uh, next to it. Yeah, they have a bit more um, uh, service detection, so they can uh, detect uh, uh, their main fleets uh, better. So what you can use is use your uh, light cruisers as spotting ships, but I'm not going to do this right now. Um, and you can also see that the uh, light cruiser here is having torpedo attack. So this ship can do damage to the enemy capital ships if the enemy has no screening efficiency. So if the enemy is not having 4 to 1 screen ships versus their capital ships, we are going to use this attack and do a lot of damage to their capital ships. Uh, this will become clear when we will have a naval battle uh, later in the game. So that is uh, what they can do, the the, uh, the light cruisers. Then we have the destroyers. And destroyers, you can see, uh, are not having any heavy attack at all. They are having a little bit of light attack, at least this one. And they do torpedo attack. And they have death charges. Uh, destroyers are the only ships that can kill submarines. Uh, you can only kill submarines with death charges. So that is the purpose of... Uh, of destroyers and they are good against convoy escorts for example if i uh, if i'm going to trade with sweden i have to go by sea right and the enemy can put submarines over here and kill those trade routes then uh, you can put destroyers on uh, convoy escort and this will scare away the submarines and if the submarines are still showing up they are getting killed because they have death charges and that is how you can use uh, your destroyers so destroyers have, have a lot of tasks they can do. Uh, now, let's go back to the submarines over here. So we have 15 submarines right now. We are having some in the queue. We have one, two, three more coming. So we will have 18 submarines. That is not a lot of submarines, but it's, it's sufficient to raid two or three tiles, sea tiles later in the game when we are going to war. Um, and what I always do is uh, first go to the commander over here, because once again, for every group you can assign a commander. That is also why I split off the submarines, so that the submarines can specialize. And Germany is having a couple of, uh, a couple of admirals, only five I think, no six, they have 
six commanders. And one of them is really good for uh, submarines, and that is Carl Dönitz over here. He's having the Seawolf trait, so submarines will do more attack. So it's very obvious that we are going to pick Carl Dönitz for our submarines over here. Uh, yes, we can get more traits later on when we get more command points later uh, that will build up uh, in the game. Then we can make our torpedoes that are on the submarines uh, better. So for now we are going to pick Carl Dönitz over here. Uh, who, who is going to lead my submarines? Now, let's take a look at the submarine here. Uh, you can see that submarines are only having torpedo attack. So, they use their torpedoes to uh, convoy raid. And yes, they could use, use their torpedoes uh, against the enemy uh, battle fleet. If we can get their screen efficiency below 100% and you have torpedoes in the neighborhood, they can do damage to their capital ships. So, uh... They can be used that way as well, but I'm using them as, uh, as uh, convoy raiders. Uh, they are really good at uh, detecting uh, fleets on the surface. And this is how hard it is for the enemy to uh, find the submarine. So it's... Uh, yeah, that's just a number really. The higher the number, the better. Uh, so yeah, that is how submarines work. Uh, what I also like to do is split this in, let's say, three of them. Uh, Fifteen is a lot of submarines in one uh, uh, division, or however it's called in the Navy, to do convoy raiding. You can use five or six or seven on each tile, and then you will have enough to uh, convoy raid. So what I like to do here is uh, split this in half. Now you can see that we have 8 and 7 over here. And um, I'm going to split this one more time. So that we have uh, 4 task forces. They are called task forces. That we can send on convoy raiding when we are going to war. Now we are still making a couple or, uh, of uh, submarines. And... Uh, what you can do is let the new boats that you build, they will go to the reserves over here. You can make them a uh, join these task forces automatically. And you can do that by clicking the task force composition editor over here. And here I can say, well, if there are new submarines, I want to go to five. And the same counts for this one. If there are five submarines, then it can join this task force. And this one as well, and this one as well. So what will happen now is when the submarines are built, they will automatically join these task forces to a number of 5. If we have more than 20, they will stay in the reserves and then when we lose a submarine, uh, one of the reserves will automatically join that task force. That is how I like to use this. Uh, let's see what else I can show over here. So this is this button. This is the automatic uh, reinforcement button. You can also click this one. Uh, you can automatic split off. Uh, this makes it that when one of the ships, one of these four, are so damaged that they need repairs, they will split off and go back to your docks and repair. And when they are done repairing, they will join this task force again. I'm a fan of using that. Uh, you can tell them when they need to repair. I like to put it on medium. So when the boats are having medium damage, they will split off. Oh, and I need to uh, take the phone. Alright, I am back. Uh, it took me one hour to uh, to continue this recording, so uh, I'm sorry if I forget something now, because I had to do uh, something very important. That is why the phone call was there. Uh, I think we talked about, uh, yeah, the leader, what the, what the things are that submarines do, and your main fleet. Uh, what screen ships and capital ships are, and how much capital ships you need compared to your screen ships. Four to one. To keep your screening efficiency to 100%, which we will show when we are going to battle. Uh, what we also need to do is get a commander for this fleet over here. Uh, let's see what we have left over here. So we have uh, Gunther Lutjens over here. Um, he is giving a bit more organization for the navy, which is this uh, green bar. It can be good. Uh, he gets a bit more experience quicker. Now he's having a positioning skill. This positioning skill is exactly what you need to get your screening efficiency up quicker. If you have a very big fleet, it takes a long time for your fleet to uh, go in position that your capital ships are protected against the enemy uh, torpedoes. 
And the bigger the fleet, the better it is to get your positioning modifier up. Uh, so positioning is a really good uh, skill for your uh, battle fleet, which is this fleet. So a uh, Gunther Luchens can be a good one. Um, and he can also get more skills. Uh, let's lo look at that later. Uh, we also have uh, Wilhelm Marshall. He is not very good because he is having a leader experience minus 25. Uh, he does have a bit more speed and damage, so that could be good. Then we have Herman Boehm over here. Um, he is a craven, so he will he will retreat very quickly, and the the, the navy does less damage, so that is not uh, not that great. He does have the uh, positioning skill as well. Uh, we have Alfred Salwechter over here. He is also an old guard, so he's not very good for us, I think. And then we have Erich Reder over here. And he is having a capital ship attack plus 10%. Now that is exactly what we are going to focus on our main fleet. We want to get a huge amount of capital ships. And we want the capital ships to do more damage. So this is a very good skill for your main fleet over here. He's also having naval lineage. And this gives a, a bonus of your number of ships in the first contact. So we can have more ships fight at the uh, together. So this is a really good uh, commander. Now let's take a look at the uh, skills he is having. He is doing a bit more damage with his uh, skill over here. 20% more defense. Uh, he is having decent positioning, which I talked about. That is very important to uh, get your screening efficiency up when a battle starts. So that's decent. Three. And fleet coordination. I'm not really sure what it does, but I guess it's, it's always good to have uh, more fleet coordination. So uh, I think we're going to go with Erich over here. And he is going to co command our uh, battle fleet. Uh, so let's take a look at the, uh, the the things you can do with your battle fleet. So uh, what you don't want to do with your battle fleet is click on patrol and then click on sea tiles over here. Okay, I am going to patrol these sea tiles and when a fleet comes, I'm going to sh shoot it down. If you do this with your ships and your capital ships, you're going to lose all your fuel. Everything. Uh, you can see that we are gaining 206 a day right now at the top. Now if I unpause the, the, the game here, you can see that my navy is using one and a half thousand a day. So we are, we are losing our fuel very rapidly this way. Um, so yeah, we don't want to do this with our main fleet. So this is absolutely not what you want to do with your big battle fleet. You do not want to patrol. Uh, just uh, right click on the remove region to remove everything. I will tell the fleet that it can uh, go back to keel over here in this dockyard. Because what you want to do with your battle fleet is do the strike force. Order the task force to wait at the closest naval base until an enemy task force is spotted. Once an enemy is spotted by one of your patrol task forces, your strike force will move to intercept it. So this is what you want to do. And I recommend going on strike force in uh, these sea tiles at the start of the game. This is pretty safe. This is a uh, risky sea tile because Great Britain could come in here as well. And then there will be a naval battle over here in the uh, Eastern North Sea. Now when you do this, the fleet, and I will unpause the, the game here, stays in the port. And wait until something is detected. And then it will go there. So that is how you use Strike Force. Uh, something else you can do with your uh, big ships is uh, naval invasion support. And this is order your ships to escort your naval invasions and support them with shore bombardment. So if I, for example, later in the game want to invade Great Britain and I have a very strong navy, then I can put Strike Force over here. Well, that is, that's also possible. Uh, or I do naval invasion support. And then the fleet will go to a sea tile where a naval invasion is happening. For example, I'm going to invade from Calais over here, from this region. I will go to Dover and Portsmouth and London. Then this fleet will move to this sea tile and give the invading forces a bonus. That is where this naval invasion support is for. But most of the time you want to use strike force. So that when something is detected, the fleet will go there and tries to, uh, to kill the boats. So that is how you use your, your battle fleet over here. Now, we have four um, submarine task forces, right? And these ones you want to use 
Convoy Raiding. Order Task Force to raid enemy convoys in the selected regions. Now, what you want to do is go to uh, Sea Tiles that are good to raid in. And what do I mean with that? Now, let's click on the Western Approaches over here. And when you hover over here, you see that this is an ocean. And when you go here, we have a deep ocean. And in a deep ocean, you can see that your submarine is less visible. They will move slower, but um, destroyers and light cruisers will have a penalty here and your submarines will have a bonus in the deep ocean. So what you want to do is uh, put your submarines in the deep ocean tiles. Now, this is a normal ocean. This is a fjord and archipelago, which is giving some uh, penalties to your big ships. Uh, yeah, to all your ships actually. So. Uh, you want to go to these tiles over here. Maybe the Denmark Strait as well. It's a normal ocean. There is no uh, uh, no penalty for any ships there. So what I will do is tell the game that I want to convoy raid here. 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 And maybe here as well. Now this is very risky because Great Britain will most likely have their capital ships on strike force in this sea tile. So when my submarines are getting detected over here... Uh, they could send maybe some, some task forces to kill my submarines. May maybe only destroyers, you know. So, this is a bit risky. You do not want to put your submarines in shallow seas over here. Because your, uh, your submarines are very visible. And it will be very easy to find them. So, that is how you do it. If you want to remove a tile, by the way, you just... Uh, uh, you shift and right click on the sea tile. And you can move it away. And you can see that I selected four uh, sea tiles because I have four task forces. So if I now uh, let the game run, then my submarines are going there. This is purely for um, showing off how it works. Uh, you can see that we had one ship here in the reserves. It's now joining one of these. Uh, that was a submarine that was getting uh, made. And since we have a uh, four out of five and three out of five, they will go automatically over there. Okay, my submarines arrived. You can see that the sea tiles are now green. And you can see that we have a 100% convoy rating efficiency in the region. If I would add another one, then I think it goes down. It's not going down. Interesting. Wait. Really? I thought it was one per tile, but apparently it's not. Wait, are you telling me that I can... Oh, there we go. Now it's 63, right? So when I remove a couple of these tiles over here... Okay, so it is not per, per task force. You can you can do more uh, area, so it's depending on something else to get the 100% uh, efficiency. But I would still recommend doing it... Uh, at least these three and maybe this one as well. At the start of the game. Now, when I do this and I will play the game right now, you can see that my navy is using uh, oil. My submarines are using oil right now. So I don't want them to be out in the sea when I'm not at war because it's costing oil. And then you can click on the hold button and they will go to the uh, closest by uh, friendly naval port. And the same counts for my strike force. I will uh, put them back into the ports. And then they will go there. Okay. We have talked about... Uh, you can see that they are already repairing. So they, they went out and they are now already repairing. Uh, what you can do is go to this button here. Naval Repair Queue. And tell all your naval dockyards that when there is repairs needed. Just go and repair. I always do that because I think repairing is very important. Okay, that is all done. Um, I will show off in this tutorial what carriers are. Because let's take a look at our research for our boats. So we have the destroyer. You know, the submarine killers and uh, your screen ships. We have the cruiser ships. We also have two different cruisers. This one is a heavy cruiser. You can see that with this uh, symbol. And this is a light cruiser. Light cruisers are good to de uh, with detecting enemy fleets. And they also screen ships, of course. 
Uh, and this is a heavy ship, but this is having a bit more heavy attack, I guess. Where's the heavy attack? There are 16. Uh, then we have the battleship, heavy attack. The submarines we have explained. But we also have carriers over here. Now, how do these things work? Carriers are boats that only their only purpose is to transport planes. And these planes can help with the naval battles. And I'm going to show this off by researching the Flugzeug Dampfer 1, Eins. And we will get towards the uh, Sidlitz class over here. And I'm going to build two of these and put them in my battle fleet. And then there is another rule that you need to know for your carriers. For every carrier, you need four heavy ships or capital ships. Because the carriers will be on the uh, on the lowest row, on the on the backwards row. You have a middle row for cap for capital ships, a front row for your screen ships, and the carriers will go behind that row. And there is also a carrier screening. And you can get 100% screening efficiency to your carriers if you have four capital ships to one carrier. So that is a bit, uh, maybe a bit uh, complicated right now, but I will show that off again when we are having uh, them built and I especially when we are having a naval battle. So right now we have one, two, three, four capital ships. We are getting two more. Actually, we are getting three more. This is also capital ships. So we have seven capital ships. So what I want to do, and I, I already know this, so I'm going to, I'm going to put this in the queue. I want one more big battleship because now I will have eight capital ships, and then I can make two carriers, and those two carriers will be completely screened by the eight capital ships, and then the eight capital ships need. 32 screen ships. Now we do not have enough screen ships, I think, for that. No, not at all. So we will have to make a lot more screen ships to protect every time, uh, 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 every row against torpedoes. So that is what we are going to focus on. Um, I don't think I need to show anything else really. Yeah, you can set your uh, repair priority on your heavy uh, ships. I would not go on automatic split off. I always want the ships to be uh, together. They repair together or they go out together. Uh, they are not going to uh, split off the ships because that could mean that the screening efficiency goes down while they are going out for a battle. So I want to keep them together. They will repair together and they will go battle together. I'm not going to split them off, so I will not turn the automatic split off on for this one. You can also tell your boats when they are going to attack. You can tell them that they will always have to engage that they will never engage. You can use this for your uh, ships that are going to uh, patrol the sea tiles. Uh, and their only job is to find other ships and then they don't do anything. They just sign... Uh, they they just give a signal to our, to our battleships and say, hey, there are boats here. You should attack them. Uh, and this way they will never engage. But for your, uh, your main battle fleet, I always put this on medium. You could say to your submarines, uh, only go at low risk. Uh, this means that they will only go and uh, take convoys down and they won't do anything else. So that could be a good setting for your uh, submarines. Okay, I think I have talked about uh, most of the Navy. Is there anything else I want to do right now? I have talked about all these orders. So the convoy escorts, uh, you want to use only destroyers that are good at uh, killing submarines. Uh, we don't have those right now. We need all our destroyers for our battle fleet, so I'm not going to do anything with that. Convoy rating with the submarines, strike force with our heavy ships, and a patrol for your uh, light cruisers, and maybe some destroyers with it that are going to find the enemy capital ships in your sea tiles. That is only when you want to use patrol. Uh, we don't have any ships for this right now, but maybe later in the game. Okay, I think that was going to be it. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the Air Force. There's also a map mode, map mode for this, and we will explain how this is all working. And then when this is done, I think we can start doing the uh, tutorial Let's Play and uh, unpause the game a bit more. And uh, just to tackle things how they come. So hopefully you're still with me. Um, just keep watching everything, uh, keep watching all the things I do, uh, it will actually help you 
uh, understanding the game. It's a lot of talking and uh, information right now, but when we are playing the game, things will, uh, will get a lot clearer, I think. So uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye.